Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. And I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Hallelujah. Three things should happen to your life as a sign that you are growing. If you come to this place again and again and these three things do not happen in your life we are wasting your time please leave if you come here again and again and again and these three things do not happen in your life I can assure you do something better with your time number one transformation if the word of God is not changing you, I'm not just talking about born again. If the word of God is not changing you, if the word of God is not changing your character, your attitude, your mindset, hallelujah, if you've been coming here for a while and you still hold on to the ideologies that you've had, if there is nothing that is compelling you to change, to drop those old ideologies, be it cultural, be it religious, be it demonic, be it worldly, be it carnal. If there is no force that compels you to lay down the ideology that you've had, then you are not growing. Hallelujah. When a man truly has an encounter with God, one of the things that must happen is transformation. 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 A change of mindset. A change of values. A change of ideology. A change of perception. Something must happen to your mentality. Listen. The word of God is a programming. The word of God is a programming. I told us last week, I went somewhere for a, a crusade and they were asking me, they said, what is the advice to Nigerian youth? I said, I don't have any advice for the Nigerian youth. The Nigerian youth, they don't need an advice. They need a programming, a change. Are you getting my point now? A change. 
Let me have someone. Aaron, good to see you. Hallelujah. Watch this. If this is the direction Aaron is headed, all right? If he's following this direction, I hope you know that he's taking this step based on a mindset. Is that true? Based on an ideology, based on a conviction, whether academic, whether cultural, whether religious, it doesn't matter. Now, what the word of God does is that when you collide with God through his word, there must be a force from the word greater than the force that was initially driving you. And that force changes your state. This is what we call repentance. To repent is not just to confess your sin. To repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed. Let me tell you, if your thought life does not change, if your mindset does not change, you can limit God in your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness. As mighty as God is, a man's mentality can limit God. For a long time, God wanted to bless Abraham. But the mindset of the traditional worship, the mindset of the culture he was coming from, limited God. God kept beckoning on him. I want to make you a father of nations. I want to make you great. But Abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do. And one day the Lord said, Abraham, come out of your house. I, I, I need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life. Abraham, come out. He said, now look at the stars. Let me give you something to play around with. And when he tried counting the stars, he said, can you count them? He said, no. He said, so shall thy seed be. Finally, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Hallelujah. The power of God is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs. It's just that we have been taught. And, and, and it's my job in the body of Christ to always address imbalances and error. On one side, we've been taught that everything depends on God. You have no role to play. You just be born again and there is a smooth ride. Common sense teaches you that it does not make sense. Are you following me now? Then on the other hand, we have men who are struggling just using concepts alone and human philosophy, forgetting that there must be a God factor in the equation of your life. Both extremes are very, very wrong. All through scripture from Genesis to Revelation, there has always been a partnership between God through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven. Hallelujah. The difference between brother A and brother B is not the color of their skin. It's their degree of alignment to the Holy Spirit. How much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values. Listen, the Bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Is that true? And, and that word, the, the, the Greek word, word there, word of God, is logos. It means the thoughts of God. So the word of God gives you his ideology. When you read my books, you study my persuasions, you study my convictions. Is that true? So if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns, you will begin to think like me, even if you've never met me. We will talk as though we've been together. This is the ministry of the word. It's not just to make us speak Christian language. No, the word of God is supposed to transcend. It produces a force. That force compels your mind to change, to align to spiritual things. So that when God wants to pass through your life, your ideologies will not resist him. Hallelujah. Bless you, Aaron. Everybody say transformation. Are you being transformed? It's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing. It's the word of God changing you. You can limit the power of the word of God. Some of you can choose to walk out of this place. Wow, nice sermon. 
So this is how koinonia is like. Wonderful. I'm impressed. I'm blessed. That can be your, the, the, the things that you are carrying back home. And someone else can sit down and say, Lord, I'm aware that my mindset is the reason why I am where I am. My mindset has been limiting your work in my life. You want to bless me, but there's something in my life that resists you. You want to lift me. You want to make me great. But there's something and I'm aware. So I come to man. He needs to step into your soul realm and take complete charge of your mind your mindset so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of god not culture there are aspects of culture that are good there are aspects of culture that are devilish devilish they were crafted out by wicked men sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of god and many of us have grown up with these ideologies and although you've gone to school although you are working although you are married that mindset is stopping god from doing certain things in your life many of us have gotten mindsets by from our past you have a mindset concerning fatherhood you have a mindset concerning marriage you have a mindset concerning money concerning prosperity concerning poverty concerning god concerning the holy spirit these are all mindsets that have been given unto us by a system that does not honor God. So when we come into his presence, we do not come just to say, Lord, add to what I have. Sometimes you need to say, Lord, open me up like a surgery, right? And pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern. Everybody say transformation. Listen, if the word of God is truly changing you, then regardless of the fact that Aaron is from Kaduna State and Ken is from the East, you should have similarities in mindset because you have, you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellence of the culture of a higher kingdom. Hallelujah. But the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of God. We love seeing the grace of God. We love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that it's the word of God changing you. The, the decisions you made last year, if you still make those decisions today, in spite of the power of God's word, then that's what they call frustrating the grace of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the days of our ignorance, God overlooks, right? So if you do not know, God can create a system by his mercy to help you. But where the word of the Lord comes, it comes to build you. It comes to take you out of your current position. Hallelujah. Say, I allow the word of God to change me. Say it, I allow the word of God to change me. The worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset. Hold on to what you had that made you such a failure. It was the failure that brought you to the presence of God. And now God is saying, lay down this thing. Pick up another culture that can take you. Your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you. Lay down that mindset and pick up another. Your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you. Your relationship is not working because there is a mindset. Men run away from you because there is a mindset. Women run away because there is a mindset. The power of God is far. Favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist but when you come to God's presence he tells you lay down this mindset lay down this mindset that's your own responsibility to say Lord all my life I've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it hit it left right and center I saw my father hustling I saw my mother hustling. 
I saw my elder ones hustling and God says, uh-uh, the kingdom of God is not haphazard. Come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works. And you're like, Lord, is there even a system? And he says, yes, there is. You can walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. All your life, you've always known that if a lady wants to marry, she'll go to a harvest with the picture of the person he wants to marry. And one goat. That's all. You've seen people around you dragging goats to harvest to chain a brother and force him to get married. That's how you know it to be done. Now you are ready to get married. And they say, oh yeah, where is your own goat? And God is saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. He says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. So a new ideology starts coming. And I'm telling you, if you are changing, it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time. Because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change. So your change begins to frustrate them. If they are not fighting you, you are not changing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Something must change about your life. Everyone is used to bribing. If you want job, give this person through the back door 50,000. And they tell you, look, we're all Christians. In fact, I'm a pastor. As you see me like this, we all did it. And the moment you want to do that, a scripture rises up in you. Something changes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. And a scripture wells up in you. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? And you turn and tell them, I'm going to cry, but my God will give me this job. I will not bribe anybody, no bribery. And they say, look at how stupid you are talking. Nigeria, this thing has been there. He said, uh-uh, I may be a Nigerian, but I function from another realm. There is a kingdom that sponsors my life. And I'm an ambassador. And I can call on the embassy I represent. It may take a while. I may look stupid. But God is able to make it happen. The moment you speak, you mount pressure on God because he's the one you are representing. And for the sake of his reputation, you cause him to step down. But many of us are ashamed at such points. You say, I went to school. How can I start talking about embassy, heaven? I, please, let's, let's be reasonable. What is 50,000? Hallelujah. Before now, your ideology has been the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man. Just find a rich, even if he's not born again, you will change him. Pin him down, force him to marry you. That's how they've been taught. And there are many people here as you are sitting down. Some is your parents. They've indirectly warned you. They say, have we not suffered in this life? You say, yes, we have suffered. Say, do you want us to continue like this? They say, no, sir. Say, tough. Complete the puzzle by yourself. What they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is, once he has not arrived, the promises are not there. Pack your load and go. And some of you, that's how you are looking. And God is sending a very godly brother. You are seeing him pray here. He's sweating in your presence. He's hearing the word of God that can change. But because he has not gotten to Canaan, while you are sitting down kicking away men, you will see a quick work that God will do in him. All of a sudden, Saul, who was a slave, or a, 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 a somebody else, will come in power and glory. And you will now look and say, Ah, oh God, why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast? Say mindset. Say it. Some of you are already angry. It's too early. I've not started preaching. It's too early this night. Could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you? There are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change. I said it last week. They are looking for lifting quickly. They want everybody to call them a pastor. You call them Aaron, they say, Aaron, you didn't add pastor. 
That's a mindset because you think that is the title that gives the dignity. He said, if you call yourself the children of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Proof that you are the children of Abraham indeed. You don't move around saying, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm a teacher. He said, let her works speak for her at the gates. Who is God speaking to tonight? Your mindset is limiting him. Your mindset is limiting God. Your mindset is limiting God. Every brother that comes to marry you, something happens and he leaves. We have prayed for you. We knew the day you were delivered. So we are sure you are delivered. But things have not changed. That means there is a mindset problem. Listen, it's not everything that is demons. You must learn to take responsibility. Many of us receive solace in the fact that demons, when you hear them say it's not your fault, you say, yes, I've always known. It's your fault this night. You must take responsibility. I've always known from my father's house they want to kill me. But you were delivered. Everybody saw that God changed you. Why have things not changed? Because your mindset is a bigger demon, an antichrist that is standing between Canaan and Egypt. Hallelujah. There are Christians who still cheat in the exam hall. They say, forget it. I saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes. Ah, I even know him. If I mention his name, I saw him. So what? Hallelujah. What about living all kinds of immoral life? In the world, the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality. It's not even for marriage. It's just a, an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with. So when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies, he goes to find somebody and say, okay, we're in a relationship. They don't even know where they are going. Hallelujah. And there are believers who love God. Some of you are here, you are looking at me. You see, I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying that, 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 that God must come face to face with the world. And when it comes, one must bow. You cannot embrace these things and say, let's go together. It can go, we can walk it. No, you cannot walk it. Light and darkness cannot stay in the same place. Don't say it does not matter. Let me tell you the truth. If you want to see the authentic glory of God in your life, no, it matters. And I always say this because many of us here are young people. Don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it. No, sir. There are people who have tapped into a higher law. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Until you climb that hill, it does not look like it's possible. Are you getting my point? I counsel people, I talk to people, and there are people who come and say, I love God, but I, women, hey, I, I can't see women. I don't, how, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves? It's not by determination. Hallelujah. If it's by determination, maybe I would have had children that, that would do children's service for koinonia. But there is a grace that takes you. So although you are human, people say, I beg, Jare, you are flesh and blood. No, but there is a spirit that lives inside you. The Bible says, know ye not that your body, listen, choose to believe this this night. Don't let it sound childish to you. Choose to believe. If it was not possible, God would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle. Hallelujah. Transformation. There are some of us who can kill for money. That's your own mindset. You overcame ladies from bed. You don't even have a problem with ladies. Because you, you want to make it. Even if a lady stands naked in your front, once there's no money on her, you are living. You are not. The devil, can, the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one. But money. Ha, ha, ha. You can be dying if they wave money, you come back to life. There are people like that. They love money. 
They can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this. They are not using it. It's, it's, doing, it's like a drug they are taking. Your worst time in church is when they say giving. Of all sorts, even if they don't mention you, the fact that somebody else is going to drop money, you take it personal. You are not giving, but just seeing that money is leaving somebody, it's, it's paining you, something is moving in your body, advise this guy to take it back. It's a spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Hallelujah. There are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness. Laziness. Hallelujah. A man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon. You are a man. When do you want to marry next year? Till one o'clock you are still sleeping. And you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting God. Preparing herself like a bride. For a very nice person you just believe that because we say hug one another in koinonia it gives you a license to just get up carelessly and just go and meet a sister and say shabby they said let's get to know one another no are you preparing for that future i'm challenging you tonight say transformation what mindset have you refused to drop down romans chapter 12 Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Be ye, how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. You get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed. The spirit of God himself and the surgical knife is the word of God that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life. And when it is done, you come back a brand new person. Hallelujah. There are many of us, those around you, who are unbelievers. There's no pressure that your life is bringing to them. In fact, they are more, they are comfortable. A guy can, I'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell. No, but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with God. That if somebody's prayer life is dying, he doesn't even need to tell you. All he needs to say is, can I come and spend weekend in your house or in your room? And they are so sure that at the end of three days, something will change in their lives. Hallelujah. There are some channels, if you are walking in sin, you will never want to turn to those channels. Perpetually, 24 hours, you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you. Dove TV, redeem. RTM, you know that? Once you are doing something wrong, you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing. When you turn to those ones, you hear Papa Adebo, just give five minutes. Something is already flogging the nonsense in you. Can your life be like that? That people are gossiping and, and talking stories about others. And as soon as you step in, everybody just keeps quiet. 
because a true ambassador stepped in one who will not compromise not that when you step in say hey come add add to this discussion what, what were you even saying that day no hallelujah that in your office when they are mentioning men and women of integrity your name must be mentioned and they know that no if you want to throw this person try it another way bribery will not work even if it means him being demoted just forget it there is no issue of having a meeting with him it will not happen come on now listen if this is not happening in this place then we are wasting our time i don't care how many people fall on the ground roll on the ground even if you float in the air if it does not translate to transformation in your life then we are lying somewhere hallelujah so is your mindset changing ask your neighbor say is your mindset changing what did he tell you ask him who can verify that you are changing you can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not the answer will certainly be yes your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not it was Satan that came to testify about Job is that true Satan himself he said ah no come on now I've seen a man Job Satan the father of all liars a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth he said I know I'm a liar I can twist things but this one there's nothing I can say against this man may that be your testimony that somebody can look at you and say I know I hate Ken let me tell you I hate him but when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed I'm an I am an unbeliever as you see me I don't fear God I let me go to hell but I can tell you this person have you seen people like that they don't respect God they look at you and say see see cigarette in my pocket but I can point to you who are the real men of God and you even be talking it was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians those who were behaving like Christ not religiously something had happened to them see if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it it will frustrate you are you getting what I'm saying one day you will be tired if you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving 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 one day when there's nobody you say Kai I'm tired honestly thank God this my wicked roommate is not going to follow me for koinonia today I'm tired that's how you can see many people serve in the body of Christ immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months they've changed in a way you'll be like ah, uh -uh. this brother used to lead prayers what suddenly happened they really did not get it I'm telling you there is a way you get it it becomes like a cancer in you no matter how much you fall you can't go too far the, the fraternity is too much it's like a cult when you see people claim to love God and two months away from an environment of God's presence they just change they really did not get it you can be among believers I hope you know doing what everybody is doing but everybody knows the foundation and the root where he's standing and the Bible says let he that stands take heed lest he falls so number one transformation number two three things that must happen in your life you're ready number two is that your life must bear fruits it must produce results write it fruits results the fruit in a tree is a sign 
that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing. Jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves. He caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth, but it was not producing fruits. Your life must prove that God is at work in you, not just by transformation. Transformation is good. We talk about character and conformity, but there must be results in your life. Everyone say results. Bishop Oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof. You don't argue with proof. Are you getting my point now? When John the Baptist sent that they should go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus did not even answer. He just turned, started healing the sick, casting out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the Messiah would do? Now see me doing it. Why are you asking again? Hallelujah. When you are a Christian and you are excellent in your job, they give you a task to do. You do it with, with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people. There is a proof there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you keep loving God and you get to a point, look, let me tell you, if you serve God with time, everything around your life should change. I'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down. Of course, in the process, there are lots of things to contend against. But with time, there must be fruit that sign upon your life that God is with you. Even if you work for the devil, even if you work for the devil, one day, ultimately he's going to destroy you. But at least in the interim, you will reap the, de the, be the dividends of allegiance. Is that true? There are all kinds of worldly people who are bowed to Dagon. And although they are going to hell if they do not repent, but in the interim, they are enjoying heaven on earth. At least that's the consolation to keep them. Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said, Jesus, if you will bow to me, I promise you, I, I, I have I have not started preaching, you know, That's the problem. You just look now and see that it's past nine. I wish there was a way I can throw all these clocks out of this, this place. There's so much in my spirit to share. Hallelujah. Everybody say results. Say proofs. If you claim God is calling you in a healing ministry, it's okay that when we start, nothing is happening. But with time, there should be the signature of God upon your healing ministry. I do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and God does not confirm it. If he's a true healing evangelist, somebody should be sick. Somebody should arise from the wheelchair. I do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of God, who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith and the work of God in their lives. I do not know one person like that except they are just talking stories. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say after me in the name of Jesus may my life produce results. Many of you this is the level you are right now. The reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribe to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefits. Is that true? And, 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 and I want to be very honest with you. Benefit in every area of life. Financially, maritally, job-wise, in every area of your life. No matter how critical people are, let me tell you, proof can close the mouth of anybody. Are you getting me? You can criticize a man the greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering. Don't waste your time. They are determined not to understand. Keep trailing the proofs. Let the works keep speaking at the gates. A point will come, those they are talking to will say, I'm tired of hearing your stories. You waste your own proof. Hallelujah. When Jesus hung upon the cross, about to die, 
the Bible says the atmospheric condition, the climate just changed. And those who looked there, they just remembered and truly they acknowledged. Even in death, they saw something. There are many of us, it will just take one proof. Everybody say one proof. One proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down. They've grown in poverty. They've suffered in poverty. Although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to God. But trust me, prosperity can bring men to God. Hallelujah. When every herbal medicine has failed, when every blood substance they, they tied in the leather and they told your father to choke in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity, when he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity, and you come teaching the principles of the kingdom and things begin to change, come on now. You don't argue with proofs. Hallelujah. May your life produce results in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be like the barren fig tree, a fig tree with green leaves. That means they are seeing you coming for koinonia every week, every week. To an extent that others can look at you and mock you and say, where is your God? I prophesy to you, your God is coming through for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your God is coming through to silence every pharaoh that attempts to mock your God. Your life will produce result in the name of Jesus Christ. Results. I believe in results. I believe in results. Many of you are here by the grace of God, not necessarily because you love me. Some of you don't even love me at all. You don't plan to. It's just that you need the results. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you are still welcome. And the power of God is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again. That's why I love the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on. Except you use talisman. That's why I worship him. Take his presence and his glory out of my life. Many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor. That's why I feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick, they kick God out of the equation and they believe they'll be able to rise without him. Impossible impossible if you are tired of your condition the greatest way is to embrace god first hallelujah because god will take you out of every situation results your life must bear fruit in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute i don't just want us to talk it as stories, my life must bear fruit. Shekata ba 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 ba. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit. I've been born again for many years. No soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life. Lord, I'm tired. I've been praying for the sick. I don't have one verifiable testimony. Let this change, oh God. Everyone I've prayed for for breakthrough, they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better. But Lord, I've told them you are with me. Change my story. The finance of my family has not changed. Lord, I'm not loving you just because of finances. But if my finances change, my father will follow me to church if my finances change if my loved ones get admission they will come to know you for their sake oh god let there be results in my life
Mekreto so supriata kashilamania. Rakata brada gadebala rabash. Please pray. I sense that God wants us to pray on this issue. Mata preteka shebele debo. Sata bakata. Rakata balanaba. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit, oh God. I'm tired of a barren and unfruitful Christian life. My ministry is not growing. Pray because there's no proof. My God, people come and they leave. If there are real miracles, if there are real transformations, they will come and stay. Everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen God change our level. Turn again, oh God, the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Let men see an evidence that God is with us. Pray. Say, Lord, let the marriage come even if it is to prove that Jesus is alive, to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say. Lord, I know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family, but I've confessed your word that it is broken. Let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family. We have no right to tell men to stop going to harvest if we cannot produce the proofs that God is with us. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that God prospers people. Lift your voice and pray. Get angry. Change my story. Change my story. Oh God, I have served you in spite of the result. But tonight, I hold on to you. Change my story. Pray, Koinonia. There is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house. Pray. Change my story. Change my story. Change my story. Prove a point with my life. Make me an object of prayer. Silence the voice of wicked men. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say, where is his help? But I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. Oh God, let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you. Come on, saints of God, travel for your destiny. There must be an evidence. You have been transformed, but there are no results. There are no results. Men have a right to speak against your God. Lord, hasten my miracle. Come on, pray. Hasten my miracle. Hasten the breakthrough. Please pray. God is answering people in this place. Lord, give my father the job. Although my auntie is past menopause, give her a child as a sign and a wonder that God is alive. Although my sister is 40 years old, give her a husband that men may know that God is alive. Although my father was sacked from the job. Give him another one, oh God, to prove that you may be a prophet over my family. Lord, you have vowed to increase my greatness. Produce results in my life. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Produce results in my life that can silence men, produce results, that can prove that my God is alive. I love him more than the results, but in this season, I desire to see the result. 
Command it. Command it. Increase my greatness. Let the blind see through my hands, O oh God, for your glory. Pray. Let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers. Open the heavens, O oh God, and let prosperity come upon my life where I'll be rejected. No man wants to identify with me. Make me an eternal excellency. Come on, are you praying, Koinonia? And a joy of many generations. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take one prayer point before we settle down. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my God. Tonight, I command you to give way. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Daniel prayed for 21 days. The angel came and said, Daniel, from the first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were answered. But the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray, I subdue powers. I subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies, territorial spirits. I subdue powers in the heavenly realms. I subdue powers, workers of evil. You must bow there is fire in my life there is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff everything God has not planted shake it off shake it off shake it from your life I shake away witchcraft I shake away divination I shake away enchantment come on now shake it off in the name of Jesus no power can stand. I am an infant of fire. No enchantment, no curse can stand against my destiny. Pray. Your prayer will bear fruits. It will produce results. Pray. The effectual, fervent prayer. Repetekete is our season of greatness. We wage war against poverty. We wage war against sickness. We wage war against the works of darkness. It's our season to arise. Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office tonight I confront you by myself I confront you by myself I confront you by myself hallelujah listen 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 there must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say Satan I've had the word enough I don't need to wait for Friday again come into my room like Mount Camel let's solve this problem once and for all they've not laid hands on me for nothing They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough prayers. 
this is breakthrough prayers I sense the spirit of prayer and I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan, this is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Christ. Listen, come, let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this. Face stand. Just stand behind. Watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough, but watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places watch this the bible says if any man afflicted let him pray
pray. Is any man afflicted, let him pray. When you begin to pray, watch this. There is a force. There is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure, pressure, pressure on all of these things. It's an ability of the spirit. You push through barriers by the power of God's spirit until you take what belongs to you. Listen. Listen. That's why God gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues. Praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes. The Bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit. But when you switch to that prayer language, the Holy Ghost, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. the Holy Ghost, listen, when you begin to pray, When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you come to pray, she doesn't let you go. If you come to pray, she doesn't let you go. Hallelujah. See, listen. There is a way you can pray. You will know when you break through. The reason is, the truth is, many believers don't pray. Hallelujah. There is a way you can pray. You will know your spirit is lifted from that realm. You will know an audacity comes upon you. You know you can shake off evil. <laughs> Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Before you sit down, you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I take back everything the devil has taken from my family. Prophesy. Shita. Wapata Let's 
The hand of the Lord is upon me and I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of Jesus I command you let them go let them go right now let them go I prophesy breakthrough I command breakthrough in the name of the Lord Jesus I command breakthrough to your family breakthrough financial breakthrough Job. In the name of Jesus, Amen. open heaven, open heaven, Amen. it's your season to rise, it's your season of greatness, Amen. every power stopping you, we challenge it tonight, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. please sit down, God bless you, be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you, the power of God is, I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year hallelujah light he said they that sat in nefta and zebulun have seen a great light a great light genesis 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them, this man, I hope you know that when he was speaking, the woman was still in the man. Because man, Adam, not the name of a man, dust. Hallelujah. Man was first created. Body has thou prepared for me. Hallelujah. And then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman. But before then, he blessed them. And he said, let them have dominion. Now listen. It is in the character of the spirit that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass. Are you getting my point? The Bible says, when at the brook Cherith, when the brook dried, it told Elijah the prophet 
He said, get thee, go down to Zarephath. He said, dear, I have commanded a widow to feed thee. But the woman did not sound like God had informed her a prophet was coming. However, the same word that took Elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman. So when God gives you a word, the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when God said, let man have dominion, that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion. Hallelujah. God does not just speak empty talk. It's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money. So let's see how God equipped man to exercise dominion in reality. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. I wish we had time, but I'll just touch briefly wherever... Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. Now watch this. Everybody look up. The Bible says God made every other tree to grow from the ground. Are you following me? However, the Bible says there were two trees. Those trees did not grow from the ground. Follow me. Are you getting my point? The Bible says God made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes. That is good for food. Then it says the tree of life also. Also in the midst of the garden. And then he says, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please follow me. I want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion. To eat of every tree, including the tree of life. Are you getting my point? The first revelation I want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger. Are you getting me? Adam could not be hungry. He was not in the fallen state. Are you getting me? In the realm of the spirit, you don't eat for, hung for hunger. You eat for impartation and knowledge. That's what food does in the spirit. Food does not satisfy hunger. No, no. When you eat food, like let's say in spiritually, now I'm not talking of all these demonic things that people, you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream. That's not what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger. Food does two things for you in Eden's atmosphere. One, it gives you knowledge. Two, it gives you impartation. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it. When he ate it, it did something to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now watch this. Everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge. That's not the topic. I want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent. One was the tree of life. The other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another word was the, it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge. The word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that God does not want his people to know. Not because he hates them. You must understand this. God does not want us to know everything. And then I will show you what the angels came and did. The fallen angels, when they came, they did something to the daughters of men. Are you getting me? They took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it. Praise God. God categorically warned man 
He said, the trees in the garden of Eden, every time you eat them, they will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you eat of the tree of life, it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion. It gives life. Eating of that tree gives life. Are you getting me? That's the mystery of eternal life, adumbrated by that tree. That's why when Jesus came, he said, uh -uh, man shall not live by bread alone. If man wants to live, he must keep eating something. Are you getting me? So, walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you, there is something that must be done in you. Please listen. And this is where I want to balance. This is what, where we get the concept of immortality. How many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality? Now, unfortunately, many people brought the teachings, but they did not understand how the operation. Immortality is not something you claim. Immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again. It causes eternal life, not just to translate from your spirit to your soul, but to happen in your body. And that's where you say, oh, death, where is your sting? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow. Are you getting me now? That the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us. This is why, although the law of immortality is at work, not many people will ever enter it. The secret is not just prayer for long life. The secret is intercoursing with this eternal life. That was how Adam was supposed to live forever. Are you getting my point now? So by eating of the tree of life, that was why when he fell, God said, no, you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying. If he ate of the tree of life, salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with god and reproduce children after his kind when Satan came into the garden, Satan did not make Adam sleep with a dog. No, he knew that that would not get the agenda done. He said, man, come. There is one tree I want you to touch. Just taste it once. It will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say forbidden knowledge. This is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft, please hear me, the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits, they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth. Are you getting me? These were the informations that were given men like Nimrod. So they had super intelligence about certain things. Are you following me? I want to shock you. I hope you will believe me. Look at me. Did you know that most of our technological advancements, are you getting me? 
are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth are you getting me it had to be a supply of a level it's not just human discipline don't mind what all those books tell you just be hard working and think well no sir those people had interactions with beings is that how did solomon become extremely rich and blessed what happened to him god visited him from another realm is that not true they had a conversation listen this conversation is still happening in the earth till today are you following me let me share with you something very briefly i hope you believe me the bible says jesus was given the parable of the wheat and the tear is that true he said while men everybody while men hold on he says while men slept something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping now the sleeping is not bad we always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding no he meant literal sleep that means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake are you getting me jesus was telling us something powerful he says the moment men sleep some beings can walk into the earth and he said the enemy quickly comes plants something and goes his way so you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept and is somebody following me what happened who came and put it there while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so these three of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12 book of moses or go and read Scientology and be looking at it and saying wow so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards everybody say forbidden knowledge are you getting that now and then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say why not I add this knowledge to what I already have are you getting what I'm saying and they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of christ all kinds of magic happening everywhere i once heard of a man of god who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody he said look at me the person who looked at him became blind at once yes completely blind at once 
Members were clapping. People were running to come and drop seed. I don't know what they were tapping into, but they were running and everybody was happy. Watch this. And then after the guy preached, 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open. And he said, for that reason, everything that is closed in everybody's life, you know, I, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen. Listen. Let me tell you. Listen. Listen. Will people get results? They will get tremendous results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws. But this is the point. Because it was not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit of God, although it is correct knowledge, it is called witchcraft. So it's not about what produces results. It's about the Spirit of God initiating and sustaining that process. Hallelujah. There are many teachings coming to the body of Christ. Men and women of God who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever. And in the midst of this prayer, because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy, they had visitations, but they were not of God. However, they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth. And they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things. And they came out from all of those experiences. And you see power, you see anointing, but it is not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit. And the sign is number one. The glory never goes to God. Such kinds of people never give God the glory because it is part of the agreement. Are you following me now? It is God's desire that we grow. The Bible even said knowledge shall increase. But you must guard. When the table is set before you, you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life. There is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up. Have you seen people? Hold on. I want to say a few things that will challenge you. Have you seen a lot of people? Please, I don't mean this for criticism or anything. Have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer? Have you, have you seen those kinds of things? That somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him. I remember a lady years ago. This lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours. I was there. ABU secure. This girl was just praying, praying, praying. She wouldn't listen to anybody. I wish I knew what I know now. And the thing confuses the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Men of God, if you're in ministry here, you have to be very careful. That, that insatiable lust for rema and revelation you must guard carefully and let this that's why walking in the spirit is the secret it gives you life when you walk in the flesh you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful it leads men to death so the more revelation a man is getting the more he's dying not to self dying as a result of the absence of light see this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of God. When you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation, when there is so much word, conferences happening, conventions happening, meetings happening, rema upon rema, Bible study, all kinds of things, yet you do not see that that word is chaff. It lacks the life to build people. There is error. I hope somebody is learning something here. God put two trees. And all the trees can supply knowledge. For one, it is the knowledge that brings life. There are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life. Is that true? There are certain teachings on deliverance. 
that brings people into bondage. Because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards. Is that true? And they added everything. And they say, if you want the devil to run away from you, once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That, that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is, that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So there is the biblical concept of deliverance, for instance. Then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards, begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit, knowing that Satan is the father of all liars. Are you getting my point now? And it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things. So when you want to pray for somebody, you look and say, uh -uh, I can't pray for you like this. You are wearing a black shoe. Change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my, my this thing for the power to work. This one is astrology and witchcraft. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Or you get all kinds of candles with different colors. This flame, that flame, this flame. And you say, now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh-uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit there in the midst of that candle. Something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class. All of a sudden, your intelligence is heightened. You think beyond your level and because you're Are you following my story, please? Because you are getting results, you will be encouraged. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful. Because many people are eating of the forbidden tree. They are eating right now, today, here and now. They are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results. Thank you. But that knowledge is not of God. Maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions. The moment you read those books, although they are blowing your mind, but something in your spirit starts checking. The Holy Ghost is telling you, uh-uh, when did you get into this? When did you get into this? And you see, these books are in our libraries. You can get them online. Many of you have watched every kind of thing. You see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many Christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last, you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again. Anytime God wants to take in and bring out of a man, sleep happens. And God caused Adam to sleep. Hallelujah. Are you understanding this? We are talking about dominion through, through spiritual intelligence. The knowledge that leads to death. I'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes wherever we stop that's it for the night two important spiritual laws that can help us i'm committed to making sure that god grants us spiritual intelligence that we have knowledge this is what makes you strong in the spirit prayer is good but it's not just enough to pray. You must have knowledge. So that when you see things, you know what laws are in place. And you know what to do about them. 
Knowledge takes away ignorance. Knowledge takes away shock from your life so that you are not surprised about anything. When you hear that something has happened, you don't just panic, you understand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Law number one is called the law of territory. If you want to walk in dominion, you must understand this law. The law of territory. Everybody say the law of territory. Look up, please. Dominion is territorial. Dominion is territorial. Even in the satanic organogram, they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories. There are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm. It's not their territory of work. Are you getting me? Every time they are on the earth realm, they are powerless. There are certain demonic operations that are territorial. I'll give you an instance. When you go to certain territories in this Nigeria, you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory. When you go outside of the territory, it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again. Is that true? And you go into another territory, maybe it's drunkenness that is there. You go to another territory, maybe it's lust and immorality. The operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial. Every man, every kingdom citizen must know this. Abraham, come out of your father's house. Come out of this territory where you are into a land that I will show you. And if you do get to that land, then I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But that will only happen if you leave one territory to another. Everybody say dominion is territorial. It's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand. Number two is that you must understand very, very clearly that in the place of your assignment, that is where you will exercise true dominion. Everything opens up for you at your assigned territory. There is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life. Hallelujah. This is what a lot of people do not understand. Please look up. You must take out time to hear from God. Are you getting me? As to where he wants you to be at every season. Not just what you want him to do for you. But where your blessings are territorial. And Isaac sowed in that land. Genesis 26 from verse 12. And Isaac sowed not just in any land. Although there was famine. God told him this is your territory of dominion. Sow in that land. A man of God may go to Zamfara. And sit down and say Zamfara is not a lucrative place. Let me run to Abuja for ministry. And he goes outside of territory. Are you getting my point? And you see a man struggling in a land of plenty. He's struggling. Yet, you will see another man in the same Zamfara. Blessings coming from people. Those who are born again and those who are not born again. Because you are in the place of your territory. Say the law of territory. Many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where God wants us to settle for every season. It can change, but that in every season, there is a territory. You miss your territory, you will never walk in dominion. Because where God has assigned you, he has commanded the ravens to feed you. He has commanded the widow to attend to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll never forget when we finished the crusade in Joss. And the PFN people called me in the particular local government in Joss. And they said, 
would you come and establish a branch of your ministry? We'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train. I was happy I went to God. God said you would die. I told the PFN people, God said I would die. I'm really sorry. I can't go. As simple as that. Many of you would have said, ah, breakthrough. God has buttered my bread and you will go there. That's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though God did not call them again. Favor is a sign that you are in the right place. When I send thee, lackest thou anything? When I send thee, lackest thou anything? By the grace of God at this level of ministry, I can tell you I am sure that we are in the place assigned. That's why it doesn't matter what venue we use. Whether it is Blue Roof, whether it is Charity and Faith, whether it's whatever. There seems to be grace backing us. So many people have called me. One lady said, them and their family members, they are praying that I must come to Abuja. They say, relocate. Your level is bigger than Zaria. I said, I appreciate you. But I remember there was a man called Ahitophel in scripture. Don't let people advise you out of your destiny. They may be genuine. They look at you and say, Kai, Zaria, it's, it's too much for your level. Say, it's true. Just that, what will we do? And you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you. You get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you. There's no space for you. You keep fighting and struggling with everybody. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us. This may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents. They got up because of looking for greener pastures. They just packed their load and said, Lagos, here we come. Ten years now, they are still suffering. Every door shuts at your face. It's a sign to go back for retreat and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Where am I missing it? Don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny. I know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it. They'll say, are you joking? In Nigeria where there's no job. But you must be careful. You exercise dominion in the place of your territory. Your territory does not just mean the geography alone. It means your jurisdiction of operation. Are you getting me? If I go and enter the prophetic ministry right now, as an office. I'm not a prophet as an office. I may operate in prophetic dimensions, but God did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office, your jurisdiction. If I now say I'm going to come in and make sure I prophesy for everybody one by one, I give you two weeks. Many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it. You say, oh God, what is happening? This guy is missing this thing. There are many men of God who were called to be teachers or pastors, but they, they got outside of territory. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are other people who were called into prayer ministries. Their anointing is the anointing for intercession, but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions. That's not wrong, except that you have come out of territory. Everybody say territory. You will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory, your jurisdiction of operation. There are certain dimensions of ministry. If God instructs me to engage in, I will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them. It doesn't matter whether I can preach more than them. It doesn't matter whether I have more miracles than them. Uh -uh. It's about the grace and the dominion. When a man is in his area of territory, you will exercise dominion freely. You see why a lot of pastors are struggling. You go to a church and copy what a man of God is doing. You do not know his, his ministerial packaging. Are you getting my point? So many people who are pastors, 
trying to do the work of apostles. Little persecution comes and they are crying. They cannot move forward because, see, when God calls a man, he equips you according to the office. When you learn this law, you will walk in dominion. Absolute dominion. There are things I have no business doing. If God gives me an instruction, he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of Christ. Watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body. People struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation. Is someone getting blessed tonight? Your assigned territory. God has honored you in the area of catering. When it comes to catering, you walk in dominion here. The next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um, building materials and you just get up and go there. You say, I'm supplying building materials. Your first supply, there was trouble. Second supply, 10 years down the line, you are still struggling. Everybody say territory. Thank you, Jesus. The second law. And then we will pray. This one is very important. It is a law that you must believe in and walk in it. It's called the law of exchange. This is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion. Giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange. The law of exchange. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. And so I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money? Have you heard of that? Everybody say the law of exchange. When you understand this law, you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered. When the Bible says an eye for an eye, have you heard that? Tooth for tooth. I've studied it. It's not like when I break your teeth, you will break back my own to revenge. Are you getting me? It's called compensation. That means if I do something to you, you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's called the law of exchange. That's where we get trade by butter. I give you a cow. You must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow. Are you getting me? That's why when man fell, based on the justice of God, God looked around to see what can be given. He said, if I give Gabriel, it's not enough. If I give Michael, it's not enough. Do you know why? Because angels themselves are imperfect. I hope you know it. Angels excel in light. They excel in strength. But they are still imperfect. Do you want me to show you? Job. Let's look at it. One scripture. You had one who said I should show you. Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now.
he could not give the angels because they are imperfect Job 4 please project it Job 4 verse 18 and 19 I want us to read it together Job 4 can we hurry up our time is Job 4 everyone read want to read he charges angels with what verse 19 He said even his servants he didn't trust them and even the angels he charged them with foolishness how much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people and so he looked at the perfect one the sinless one and said you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said, bow to me. In other words, let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me. Are you getting my point? Just bow to me. Since you are the expression of the Godhead, bow to me so that the Father will see you bowing to me. And I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, he tells him, what are you going to give me in exchange? Please listen. I will tell you, this is the reason why many territories are powerful. This is why some of the terrorisms you see in Nigeria are powerful. They always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory. That's why they do it military might irrespective. Are you getting my point? When you come to God and say, Lord, I want you to use me. God says, what is the exchange for it? And you say, Lord, take my life. Have you heard that scripture that says, what shall it profit a man if he does what? And what? Loses his soul. That means, he said, Satan, let's do business. And Satan said, of course, I'm a good businessman. I will give you my soul give me the world so that anywhere i do business whether in italy whether in dubai let it work so that i must be the governor of this state or i must be this take my soul so that i will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me and he says all right let's have the deal and he says take my soul they have received the mark of the beast that's the 666 there it's not something that will be put on their hand they have given their soul they have received the mark are you getting my point so Satan comes to you what do you want to give in exchange please listen something must be given in exchange if you must walk in true dominion everybody knows this is not a herbal strategy it's a spiritual strategy I'm walking in the anointing I'm walking in by the grace of God because I received this of grace, but something went for it. My life, my will, my ambitions, my desires, they were laid down. That's why I wrote that song. Take all of me, all of me, you have my everything. That's my deal with God. You have my everything. Are you getting me? So my entire life will give him glory. The day I compromise on my own part of the deal, his mercy will show up. But if I walk in rebellion, I have broken the deal. That's the reason why a man can give an exchange. He will say, I will give you my firstborn. Only give me this political position. When the firstborn is now born, the people come and say, oh yeah, oh, we gave you the power. We gave you the wife. Where is our firstborn? And you say, sorry. I didn't realize that children are this nice. I've changed my mind. They say you've changed your mind. We will see. All of a sudden, the child starts getting sick. They must collect their child. Except the power of God intervenes. This is the reason why 
many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the law that terrorists use. Before they ever carry an assignment, they must take out time. Are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood, people become richer? Think about it. The moment blood is shed, somebody makes money. Exchange. 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 Are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of Solomon touched the Lord? He offered a thousand bond offerings. It was an expression of his heart. God could not stop. He came down. Many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life. You are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength. But tonight, how many people are ready to say, Lord, take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a harbor list and see if you just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some Christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion I've said it again and again, nothing just happens. The day Jesus will come, we have a long world film to watch. That's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. I will never forget one time I was praying in the night years ago. And I prayed and I was dedicating my body unto God. I stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and I lay down on the floor. I said, Lord, let this body become a superconductor of your anointing. If there is anything you can do to this mortal body, let it carry your power. This body cannot be used for sin and hell. It, it, I dedicate it unto you. And God said, this is what you are giving me. I will put my glory upon your life. Somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and saying, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange we will give you the souls of men. We will give you mankind. We will give you a lot of things. And it's happening here in the earth. That's why you can see a man sitting down. All of a sudden, within two weeks, this man becomes a mysterious millionaire. Either God has done something to him or the devil has done something. There was an exchange somewhere. A man of God is sitting down and all of a sudden, power comes upon his life he begins to do supernatural things i tell you there is an exchange he has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say lord take it take my life and use me for your glory or he has gone to a herbalist and say take my firstborn or every two two years kill 10 members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising The life that I now live, Paul told us the secret of his anointing. 
He said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of God. Let me show you the dynamics, the spiritual technology that is responsible for the miraculous. I pray that your eyes will be open to see. Verse 13. Please, let's hurry up. Listen. The Bible says there were 10 lepers who have been discussing. Is this how we will continue? Abi, people will come and drop offering or whatever for them. And the Bible says they had. That means they had been they had received an assurance that Jesus was able to do it. Is that true? Now watch what happened. This was their first manifestation of faith. When Jesus was passing, what happened? They lifted up. Are you getting me now? And they did what? The Bible did not say they lifted it and just, they just whispered. To lift up means they shouted. And they said, Jesus, Master. You know Jesus doesn't walk alone. I'm sure his peers were saying, hurry up. They said we may be crippled, but our mouth is not crippled. We are going to shout till we get your attention. Listen, did Jesus respond? That's how he will always respond when we manifest faith. Next verse. And when he saw them, he said unto them, listen, Kai, I love Jesus. Goodness. He just said, the only reason why you are calling me is because you think I can help you. If you really believe, stand up. Go and show yourself. As simple as that. No grammar of saying, okay, if I said this, then this should... Grammar, that thing we do is not called faith. If you take action, God is committed. Listen, the Bible says, and it came to pass. Watch this. As they... This is the dynamics. Listen, I want to explain something powerful here. As they, they were, that means their being cleansed was tied to their going. As they, they were, this sign shall not go before. If you prove God sent you, start moving. And he said the signs, the signs will follow those who can act. This is why we are here tonight. Just one last scripture and then we'll pray. Goodness, my spirit is fired up. John 9. Let's look at one example of one blind man. John 19, verse 1 to 8, but we'll just look at verse 7. Jesus came. Look at me. There are so many interesting people that do lots of things in church. Do you know that there are people that when they come, when hands are about to be laid on them, he said, don't lay hands on me, just speak. You are a sick patient. The doctor said, turn for injection. He said, I don't like injection. Walk out of the hospital. As simple as that. When there's a way the sickness will press you, that even if the syringe is the type they give a cow, you say, just give me. When you still have options, you are not yet pushed to the world. Look, let me tell you. There is a way life will push you to the world that you must react. Are you getting my point? Verse 7. Are we there? John, what did I say? John 9, not 19. 9. Listen. Look up, please. Let me just tell the story quickly. Remember the man who was born blind. The Bible says Jesus spat on the floor, correct? And he started making clay. I can imagine, well, the man could not see. Now, watch this. Hiya, I love Jesus. Jesus inspires me. I'm telling you, he said unto him, to who? The blind man. Jesus was not talking to the person who was holding his hand. He spoke to the blind man. He said, oh God, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sent. And the Bible says he went his way therefore and washed and returned seeing. How will Jesus speak to a blind man? Oh yeah, I've done my own part. If you like, sit down here for one week. If you are interested, go and wash. Remember what the prophet told Naaman. He said, go to Jordan and bath. 
while he was giving all those confessions, I will not go. I will go. I will not go. He said, continue. If you want to manifest faith, carry two of your legs, march to Jordan. He was saying, are there no other river? This is, many people think it just stops at talking, talking, talking. Naaman was talking, rapping, standing in front of Elisha's, he didn't even come out. He said, tell him, go and wash and do it seven times. He went there. It was a very muddy water. Hallelujah. Bath the first time, nothing happened. He was getting angry, but when the word is fulfilled, God is committed. I can imagine the Holy Ghost just roaming around that pool. Number two, he could not move because until your obedience is complete. Number three, the guy could not move. At a point, he would say, oh God, he said seven times, seven, seven. That was the word. Number five, he would have just left and gone back and the Holy Ghost would say two more times for my spirit to come in. Listen, the Bible says the moment he entered the seven times, he just came out and he saw his skin. That means the Holy Ghost was waiting anxiously. You do your part. You do your part and see the power of the highest. You do your part and see that cancer melt. You do your part and see that curse broken in your family. Hallelujah. At the beautiful gate, there was a man there. The Bible says he begged for arms. Is that true? Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer. And the Bible says he was begging them. He was not begging to stand up because he did not believe. Are you getting me? So he had no reason to take action because he was not convicted. But Peter did something because faith comes by hearing. When you hear of someone's ability, he said, Mr. Man, I don't have money to give you, but there is something I have. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if you believe I have this, he said, stand, look up. The man sat down there and was looking at them and was wondering. And Peter remembered the teachings of Jesus. And the Bible says, Peter held his hand and said, stand up. And the Bible says, he leaping, he leaping, he leaping. The Holy Ghost was moving Peter. Get this man to take a step. In every area of life, listen, there is a role you have to play. Are you getting me? There's no time I would have shown you how that for every area of your life, when the word came in Samaria, by this time, tomorrow, nothing happened. But the power of God was moving, waiting for those who would take action. All the people in the land, including the emojis, did not go. And the spirit of God went to four lepers. They said, we will stay here and die. We are lepers, but let's stand up. The Bible says when they went, the, the enemy started hearing the sound. This is the amplification of the spirit. The sound of chariots. Until there is action, you are not manifesting faith. If you can get this teaching tonight, by the time you are coming for February Miracle Service, you'll be shocked. Because see, this, as simple as what I'm sharing is, this is the missing link. You are praying and fasting, but you have not found out the conditions for prosperity. It's not demons. It will not change. Till the day you find out and walk in it. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are keys. That's your part. When you see, listen. I submit to you with all humility. Are you seeing this crowd that are gathered? They did not come by magic. If you think it's by magic, try it. People are not idiots. Are you getting my point? I said by, with all humility. I hope it doesn't look like I'm bragging. I'm just trying to communicate a point. Do you know what it means for people to come and sit on the fence? Sit everywhere. There are keys. If you don't have it, you don't have it. But when you find it, I can imagine the Holy Ghost based on the conviction he gave us. While we started preparing, as decoration was working, the power of God said, now you are responding based on what you believe I'll do tonight. Therefore, let me begin to bring all the people to honor the word. Don't you see that this is how faith works? Listen, there are many people 
who will never marry because they are waiting until the day a sponsor or a donor gives them two million. God has spoken to you. Marry in June. How much do you have? 100,000. But God said, start moving. He said, hey, Lord, I, this girl's parents, the way they looked at me that day, what is your business? This sign shall follow. The moment you are going, your uncle starts calling and says, I just felt like calling you. He did not just feel the Holy Ghost, the one who confirms the word. Hallelujah. Listen, the sister who gave a testimony about the change in her result. Imagine if they prayed for her. Now a prophetic word had come. Is that not true? She sat down. She said, Lord, I believe your word. What did she do? She got up. As she was, did you see that when they checked, they did not find her paper? But God said, Am I too small? And you just dropped the paper on the table. Did you not hear the testimony? Listen, when you play your part, I'm telling you, in an inexplainable way, God is committed. And tonight, I want you to know that your part is to have come. See, I tell people with all humility that for coming to this ground alone is already 50% of your problem. So you know why? Hold on. If you know the demonic forces that as many people here what happened this morning and the way the devil tried to stop them from coming many of you will agree with me that things came up some of you didn't even have money but you said if it means trekking i will trek while you were trekking the holy ghost was saying mark them mark them practitioners of the world they must be blessed tonight some of you came outside and you still sat down your friend said let's go back you say i'm not going back you can go but this night although i'm outside my ministry must change my business must change this cancer must die rise up on your feet everybody go ahead and pray in tongues in one minute god is about to do mighty things in this place rise up on your feet everybody Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I'm convinced that you are able. You can change my story. In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Please listen to me. I tell you the truth. I came here tonight with a very unusual unction. I know the things that I've been, the head of department, prayer band, he even sensed it. I remember he sent me a text. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost is in a place, nobody can tell the extent of devastation he can do to the kingdom of hell. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, make sure tonight, as you hear the word, listen, I don't know the issue that you came here with. I can only communicate the few because of time constraint. 
and because we see in part I must not mention your case are you getting what I'm saying this atmosphere carries an anointing so no matter how far no matter what the issue is it will bow it will bow tonight hallelujah listen listen as i begin to rebuke sicknesses we're going to be very fast we don't have time for a lot of things hallelujah god has showed me that there will be dramatic dramatic instant healings dramatic instant healings now listen please When we begin to pray, I don't know if we'll call the people out and lay hands or whatever it is we will do. Make sure, remember the teaching, you must take action. You must take action. That action, look at what our mommy shared. Remember the, the, the testimony our mommy shared. Do you know that we brought, I sent that they should bring a seat for her. What? She refused. As a proof to the devil. Are you getting my point? That, that I may be old, but I'm well. Are you ready to drop those chains now? There is no need. Please hear me. There is no need tonight to walk away with whatever situation. For there is a name. There are families represented here tonight. Tonight you will pass the Red Sea and you will part with Egypt forever. many of us who have come under spells it's time for us to check those devils out of the lives of people because the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession Hallelujah. I tell you, if you see what the Lord is showing me in the spirit, goodness. The devil is in trouble this night. Lift your hands, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Hallelujah. Hear me wherever you are. The power of God is going to begin to move across the crowd. And everywhere you are, there is a name tonight that is above every demon, every yoke, every spell. And at the mention of that name, devils will leave hallelujah hallelujah at the count of three 
wherever you are, goodness, there will be so much deliverances outside. Listen, as I count three, I want you to shout that name. That's your action of faith at the top of your voice. And we will begin to command this wicked spirit. Already the power of God is moving. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I call spirits, I call devils, devils, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, now, come out, go cross the Porsche, outside, outside, the fire of the Holy Ghost, bring them out, bring them out, the fire is falling outside. Lift up your head, all ye gates. I command spirit, devil. Let those people go now. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey! Outside, the fire of God is falling. The fire of God is falling. Outside, the fire of God. Every yoke, every curse, every covenant, every ordinance of darkness. Help the ushers, please. If they need more people, help them. Let's save time. Let's save time. We don't have time, please. The power of God is falling outside. Falling outside, falling outside, every spell, hallelujah, just those outside, lift your hands, the first overflow and the second, both of you lift your hands, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus, there will be a rain of deliverance, are you ready now, one, two, three, Hallelujah. Pass. Please follow me. We have to hurry up. Listen. Goodness. There are people here. Listen. You can't sleep sound in the night. Someone must come and sleep with you or oppress you. There are people who see snakes. This lady is one of them. Let her go. Come out now. Out. Out. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Her praise Kabbalah. Out. Hallelujah. Now listen, please. Please, let's hurry up. Just follow me. Just keep bringing them. Goodness. There are so many angels outside. Capren de Gambo. There's no hiding. Not in the light of God. Second. In Terekaba, Shakapa, Shakapa, Sopros, Kepari, Kepros, Kepos, 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 Kepos,
Let her go now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I challenge you right now in the name of Jesus. Break everything out of her now. Now. Come out of her right now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. Let her go now. 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 Listen, listen, many of you don't know why, listen. Hear me. Please listen. Let's hurry up. Do you know that behind the situation of many people are the workings of these wicked spirits? Listen to me, please. Don't let anybody fool you. There are some of you, you may not need to fall, but deliverance is already happening to you. So don't you think it's just those that come out? No. Once the word goes, some of you are already feeling things leaving you. Look, look at this girl for instance. You really believe a lady will have this strength, three people holding her? Wickedness is real. Leave her alone. On your knees and out of her. Quickly, just leave her. On your knees and out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Watch the power of faith, all of you. Watch, just, no, don't worry. Don't concentrate on her when she does it. Leave her alone. Listen. Listen. You see why it's good to be spiritual? Because now, one brother will just get up and come. You don't know where you are going. I'm not talking about her now, please. Nobody should stigmatize her. Are you getting my point? One brother just comes and bounces. You don't know what is happening around the spiritual arena of somebody's life. You come and enter into something that will whip out. Look at, she cannot even go out. Look at, she's standing at the door. She can't even cross the door. She will go on her knees. Don't worry. You will see the authentic power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Behind the pain of many families is the operation of darkness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of our families, some of you as you are standing here, don't think God is visiting you alone. You should understand us here. Your salvation is not complete until your household is touched. These are the spirit. That's why you try and try. You keep doing. This is what has stopped the admission of others. This is what has stopped the marriage of others. This is what has killed the destiny of many people. But tonight, you will part ways with it forever. Now I want to pray. I see a lot of, many of you will be surprised what will happen now. Hallelujah. There are so many people that are tormented in their dreams. Listen to me. You can't have a sound sleep. But you see people come. Animals chasing you. All kinds of devilish demonic things. Snakes. Some of you having intercourse with all kinds of people. Whether a man, whether a woman. When you are about to go for a job interview. These things happen to you and that's the end of it. It doesn't matter what happens tonight. There will be a separation once and for all. Lift up your hands again. Please lift up your hands. Let's hurry up. Whether they are causes, whether they are yokes, whether they are manifestations of spirit husband, spirit wife, 
wherever that devil is as you shout Jesus I see fire fire will move from inside to outside and many people will be delivered right now at the count of three are you ready thank you father let your fire move right now one two three go 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 spirit husband spirit wife demons of darkness ancestral causes go 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 serpents scorpions marine spirits out 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 by the fire of the holy ghost For all these people outside, I'm speaking to the spirits now. At the count of three, the fire of God burns you out of these people. Every spirit, hear my voice. I speak from the realm of the spirit right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. You have peptic ulcer. Lay your hands on your chest right now. Quickly, please. 
Please, let's save time. Peptic ulcer. God is healing peptic ulcer now. Now, I don't know if we have all the time. Hallelujah. We want to take a few instant testimonies. Some of these people, when they stand up from being delivered, many of them will stand up with all kinds. Some of them are having visionary experiences right now. I hear the chains falling, falling, yeah. I hear the chains, I hear the chains. Oh, she back at the guitar. I hear the chains. Zeko pedi ya shakata. I hear the chains. Now listen, listen. Let me explain this. We always do. But for the sake of those who are coming, don't you think that those who are being delivered here are witches? Are you getting my point? Because as you are standing there, you are receiving your own deliverance. This is a family. This is an oppression of darkness. We don't want to know what the reasons are. They must go. Are you getting my point now? Peptic ulcer in the name of Jesus. God is going to heal peptic ulcer right away. Some of you, listen. Some of you will feel. Let me see how many people with peptic ulcer inside and outside. Just lift your hands. Let me know. All right, quickly. As I pray for you, for many of you, you will feel something lift off you. If that happens to you, run out quickly and come out. Run out quickly, please. Let's save time. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a lot of black substances around the chest of people. I cause that devil of ulcer. I command the wound heal now. Heal and close up now. Heal and close up now. Not later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Regina. Regina. Who is Regina? Regina. Please, when I call your name, quickly, quickly, hurry up. Regina. The Lord, listen, the Lord is setting your family free from witchcraft. Are you hearing me? This is what God is doing. This lady is going to begin to cough out things. Please take her outside. Come. She's going to begin to cough out things. Out of her now. Take her outside, please. Please clean this up. The Lord is setting your family free. Look at me. You will begin to see dramatic things happen in your family because this has been the finger of darkness. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, there's someone, there's someone here. You feel movement around your right leg. You literally feel like an object, like a snake moving around, especially when you're on your bed. Who is that person? The Lord is revealing to me. Please, quickly, let's save time. Once I mention your case, just come out quickly so that whether you are inside or outside, let's just hurry up very quickly. We don't have time. Goodness, help us, Lord. The devil is in trouble tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You are the person? Okay, hold on. You've been having this pain. Please tell us, how has it been? Yeah, it started from here. Listen, listen, please. For about three years now. About three years. What do you feel, sir? I feel pain here. Uh -huh. They scanned, so nothing. They scanned, there was nothing. And you feel it moving? Yes, up to now. I'm even up to now, even now as you're talking. Watch it disappear now. Watch it disappear. You, you are an elderly man. You get my point. So you will not come and be lying when it's not done. But you watch and see what the power of God will do. Because they scanned it medically. Goodness, please let me do something quickly. 
I see this lady wearing a crown. Let it go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on her. Anybody, lay your hands. Thank you, Jesus. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. All our workers are anointed. It doesn't matter who lays hands on them. Out! An anointed hand is upon you and you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. The Lord Jesus brings you healing. Complete healing. Thank you, Jesus. I want to rebuke that spirit right now. That devil of darkness. Let him go right now. In the name of Jesus. Wow, something is happening to you. You feel something happening to you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Cabro That devil, go! Now in the name of Jesus. Can you walk now? Just shake your leg. You feel pain? Only here. Where? Right here. All right, lay your hands. Lay your hands. Lay your own hands there. The power of God is going through you, that very place. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause pain. Tell me, do you feel any pain there? You feel any pain there? It's going. It's going, right? It's going, right? Look at him smiling. It's going, right? Now, check it. Check it. Thank you. Thank you. What is happening? Check it. 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 Go it will go. Everything will be. Thank you, Jesus. Now bend down. Go ahead. Bend down. Just no, not kneel down. Just bend down. Up and down. Exercise it. Yes. And watch the pain leave. Any pain. Any pain. Come on now. Give Jesus strength. Any pain there. It's going. It's going. Where? Where exactly? You should be totally healed. What did the doctors tell you? These are demonic things. About, about, about six. Six years. Five or six scanning. Anytime, listen, anytime you scan, you see the doctors checking, checking, and they tell you we don't know what is wrong. Save yourself headache. Just come for prayers quick. Because it's the classic sign that this is the finger of God. This is the finger of Satan. It's exactly three years. It's exactly three years. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name. Now check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Go ahead. Hit, hit yourself there. That's what I want. Until you don't feel any pain. What do you feel? Everything. Everything. When everything, when everything disappears, look at God healing. Regina, Madam, ah, now wow, look at the spirit of death lingering over you. The devil would have taken your life in an accident. It would have been an accident, a bike accident. A car would hit you and kill you. That would be the end of it. Are you married? Where's your husband? We have to pray for him too. But let me pray for you. I cast that spirit of death. Go! No death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your mom feels movement. Hold my hands. We set her mom free right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's somebody, please listen. This, this is where the pain is. The Lord is showing me. Just this side. I don't know whether it is, it's a bump, it's a pain, it's a swelling. Very serious at this side of your neck. Please, who is that person? The Lord is healing that person right now. The Lord is healing that person right now. Very quickly, the Lord is healing that person. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please, quickly, quickly, let's save time. The Lord is healing that person right now. Quickly, the Lord is healing that person. Come, you are the first person God will heal. The devil wants to bring madness on you. Hold on, look at me first. Don't show me your back. Don't. Wait. The devil wants to bring madness on you. This is how you would have seen this guy. I don't know who knows him. You would have seen him walking on the street. 
because it's a, sometimes you sit do you have any feeling maybe you are not yourself you have those yes sir you have those kind of feelings sometimes you feel as if you don't even it's like you don't know yes this is madness this thing would have come upon you last year it was because of the hand of god and the devil was determined that this year this madness must follow you but tonight god will deliver you you believe me we have to pray for you because i'm seeing you tied in the spirit this is what i'm seeing tied completely god is touching someone there bring the lady let hope rise i command that madness go right now i see look at what is happening to him look at look at this look at this how can somebody just start scratching his head because i said go this is madness the devil wanted to put up on go 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 out of him right now take your devilish madness back to hell hallelujah what's she here for your neck now all of you lay your hands god will heal you right now please look at the number of people how can i just guess that your neck is failing you Lay your hands. The power of God will touch you right now. Bring that lady for me. Out! 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 You must go now. I'm seeing an altar burning. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. This is what is happening to this girl. I'm seeing a shrine, a shrine catching fire. Every shrine, every devil shrine, where your name and that of your family member has been taken to, it catches fire now. It catches fire now. Hallelujah. Goodness. God is going to do a fantastic miracle outside. I'm seeing a hole in the teeth covering outside. God is filling up supernaturally a hole in the teeth. Please check it. If you confirm you are the one, don't tell us lies here, please. Confirm it and come out. God is, God is filling holes. Holes. Literally, literally to close up. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, God wants to do a number of things. Irregular menstruation. God is going to heal a lot of these things. And then lump. Lump in the breast or around wherever abdominal region. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. Remember, action, when I pray for you, check yourself. Right now, every lump in any part of anyone's body, whether in the breast area, in the back, at the abdomen, around any part of the body, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cause that growth now. Let it disappear now. Let it disappear now. Let it disappear now. Now, now, long go in the name of Jesus. Now begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Hallelujah. Now let's do this quickly. Every, every other person, if you came here specifically for a healing miracle, please come out and line up here. Or if you brought somebody, please. Just line up. Ushers protocol. Help us arrange them, please. Please be very orderly. No fighting. Let's hurry up. While that is happening, how many of you have not written your prayer requests? Please write it quickly, quickly. 
Write it quickly and let's have it. You came specifically, whether within Zaria or outside Zaria, you came specifically for healing. Hallelujah. Specifically for healing. Please, let's save time. You can see that we're really out of time. We started late. Hallelujah. Myself and Bishop will minister to you. Listen, please, as we pray for you, expect the power of God to touch you. And as the power of God touches you, begin to check yourself as you go back to your seat. Please come out, line up. Once we pray for the first row, just give thanks. And the rest will just be praying in tongues. Worship team, you're going to lead us. Very hot worship as we do this. Very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Bishops. So we're going to pray for you. Some of you are coming out. What will happen is these wicked spirits that are responsible for these things will leave you. Are you following me now? I know that there are some of you standing in for your loved ones. So as we pray, call them. There are some of you, put your phone on speaker when it's time to prophesy. Tell your loved ones a word is coming. Wherever they are, let the power of God touch them. Hallelujah. Bless you, worship team. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situations. You are the joy of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all situations. You are the joy of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. 
Tyron, doctors. affects him anyway. Okay, but, but we're going to pray. That is, uh, you came here and the Lord Jesus is going to visit you right now. We don't fake what you see here. There is a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you, brothers and sisters. There is an anointing. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I am serving the living God. Out. His Out. Faith Out. His Jesus Out. Christ. I see him die. This is what I see. He died.
Legs, goodness. Since when? Ten years. Ten years. How do? Are you a witness? Is you that brought? What? What? How do? How does it shift? She will fall and can. Hold on. Look at me. Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nikab, I speak to you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, no shifting for you again from today. I bring you the authority of the kingdom and the spirit that sponsors this wickedness out. Now, I command your ligaments, I command everything like Ezekiel 37 to be back. Walk. What do you feel? What do you feel? Look at, come up. Her ligaments for 10 years. She, she falls down by herself. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Her kneecap used to shift. Her kneecap used to shift. You are come, come, come up. Who are you to her? Who are you to her? A family friend. You are a what? Family friend. You know her. You know that this is true. Sister, look, look at the girl crying. Could she do this before? She couldn't do this. Her kneecap will shift and she'll fall. That devil is a liar. Whatever the devil has taken out of its place, we bring it back in the name of Jesus. See, God is working on her. That wicked spirit, out! Come out right now. How dare you come upon the altar of God? Out! Out! Now, this is the, you see that? I told you many things. There are wicked spirits. Behind the activities of men. Let's hurry up. He died and rose. Jesus died. Then he said, The what? They They initiated him into what? They gave him food. Then you'll be still spiritual something. You you'll be still spiritual something that you knew. If he tell you, you'll be surprised. Oh, they initiated him. That devil is a liar. Bring him up. Uh -uh, don't, 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 please, don't cry. It's your daughter. It's okay. See, mommy, look, let me tell you. Including you, God, will set, God is setting her free. You should be happy. Don't cry. This boy will be delivered right now. Boy, how are you? You are good? They initiated you. Yes. Yes. Eh? Carry him go. They said they should carry him. That they will not allow him to go to, to stay for that school. And me, I want him to be there. You, look at this. Hallelujah. That this water is blood. 
If they are playing, you'll be telling them that see this thing, see this thing. You'll be built function and mommy, listen, it's not the fault of the boy. This is this is demonic. Are you getting my point? This is why Jesus brought you here today. In the house, whatever you keep in the house, he will not be there when you kept it. But if he enters, he knows where it is and he will carry it. No matter where you keep it. Yes. You used to steal. What does he do with it? He, he was even at times the father kept ten thousand. Even I myself, I didn't know that there was money there. He went there, he carried the money with his friend, and they finished the money. How old is he? He's eleven. Eleven years. Eleven. It was eleven in December. Watch your child be delivered upon Mount Zion. Look at this woman. I'll be fasted 21 days. They will tell me that I, even I myself have seen a hand holding him. I'll be forcing myself, calling him, he should come back. He will not come back to look at me. Then the man will be holding him, going. And one woman said that he cannot come out of this. But I believe that the God has come that he can do for me. That is so so let hope rise. Darkness dwell After me, Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. From today. From today. I set myself free. I set myself free. By the power of the blood. By the power of the blood. From any covenant. From any covenant. And any initiation. Any initiation. From today. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Satan. Satan. Pack your load. Pack your load. And go. And go. I have no business. I have no business with you. With you. I declare. I declare that I am for Jesus. I am for Jesus. Satan, you had him. Goodbye. Let him go now. Out. This same thing is happening to some that lady. That's your, it's a family covenant. Are you seeing it now? Are you seeing as I'm praying for him? It's happening to her. It's a covenant. Don't cry, mommy. This is what is happening. How can I be praying for somebody here? The same thing is happening. In the realm of the spirit, there's no distance. They are tied by blood. That's the, as he was making this confession, you can see it affecting her too. These are spiritual laws. He will keep this one by saying, because this one was revealed. We don't have all the time. Don't worry, mommy. From today, listen, it's okay. It's okay. Please, please, please. We beg you. Eh? Look at me. I assure you, you will return next week or next miracle service with all these children testifying. Boy, look at me. Can you see those people again? No. Can you see them again? No. You can't see any of them again. You will never see them again. And the same way you have been set free, I set that lady free now. Leave her alone. No, 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 I'm not talking to you people, I'm speaking to the spirit. Go! Now! How can it know that I'm talking? Am I not talking to everybody here? Madam, it's okay. I need to set you free. Huh? I'm seeing your head tied with a snake. You see snakes now? Even snake, even they will... Hold on. Do you know me, madam? Have I ever seen you? How did I know that snake is tying you? Mm. This is your own because we need to pray for you too. Oh, that girl. What's the problem? Leave her. Ah, uh -uh, is that why you're holding her? Don't leave her alone. 
yourself. Let's pray, please. We have to hurry up. Goodness. To heal you right now. Hallelujah. Shout, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Are you ready? I hear the chains falling. Oh. I, I hear the chains falling. It's alright, mommy. You are free. You and your family, salvation comes to you this I night in Jesus' name. She's okay, she's free. Please, while this is happening, start passing your prayer request. Inside, outside, please quickly, start passing your prayer request. If you've not written it, write it. When we are prophesying, you are free to call your loved ones and let them connect. Or if you have whatever point of contact, no problem, it's scriptural. He will pick a knife that he wants to kill his kid. See another episode here. What? He will pick a knife that he wants to kill his immediate elder brother. He will pick a knife that he wants to kill him. My brother, how are you? Well done. You love Jesus? You Wait now. He's not the one. Look at me. Look at me. We give people here, among other things, spiritual intelligence. You understand? No man can just get up. Please, while you're listening, be passing your prayer request. God answers prayers in miraculous ways here. In case you wanted to write something and you've not written it, please write it quickly. Whatever it is. So, he's, he, you didn't come for yourself, just for him. My brother, how are you? What's your name? Clement. Clement. You love Jesus? Yes. You will be delivered right now, alright? He carried knife to kill who? His elder brother. Why? Just like that, I was in school, they called me. They had to lock him. They released him yesterday so that they locked him in the police station for three days because he carried knife to kill his brother so they released him yesterday so that he will come for this miracle service the devil is a liar brother look at me you will be set free right now you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all the Let him go now. Every foul devil. In the name of Jesus. Go. Every desire to Go, go. Eh? How old? 
nine years and his SS. And we are going to change genotypes in this place today. Don't ever believe. Hear me. Hear me. Don't you ever let anybody tell you you must remain SS or AS for the rest of your life. I'm not negating medicine, but I'm telling you there is power to change it. If this is the only miracle you have, I know many people who cannot marry today because they said they are SS. We will change it. If God cannot do it, then he is not God. But I think God is able, isn't it? Hallelujah. I change this SS now. The next time it's tested, let it be found AA. Hepatitis, go. In the name of Jesus. you're guarding the request just begin to bring it we have to kill many birds with one stone please hurry up we really apologize for the time you can see how much the time is constrained we can't do much Help me, please. Some of you can see me, please, Bishop. Let's so that we'll tidy it up. Okay, let's, let's, don't worry. This healing rain is pouring. I hear the rain, and I'm not ashamed. Not afraid, and I'm not afraid. Out. Mommy, what's wrong with you, ma? Diabetes and cough. Diabetes and cough. Be healed now.
submit your prayer request. It will go now. Look at me. Just look at me. Let her go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just look at me. She has an incision. They did an incision for her. Native doctor. And don't worry, please. We don't have all the time for this. Whatever it is, Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name. Go! Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now. Go, go, go. And to be possible. Hallelujah. Please, we don't have all the time. Bishop, come. Hallelujah. We are going to pray on this request. Please stand up. Please bear with us. But every part of this meeting is important. Please, please and please. Just two more things and we're out of here. You can see how the time constraint. There is so much we want to do, but... Hallelujah. Now listen. God answers prayers in dramatic, supernatural ways here. Hallelujah. And as we pray, I'd like you to stretch your hands towards the altar. Hallelujah. And just pray in tongues. Lots of miracles will start happening to people and for your family members. After that, I'll now speak into your life. This is the best part of the meeting. Stretch your hands, please. Stretch your hands even as we pray. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We present our request before you. The things that we desire that you do for us. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that from this night we'll begin to celebrate these miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Some of the requests look impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for we are celebrating the miracles, the successes in the name of Jesus. None will go unanswered in the name of Jesus. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, we present this request in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Please stand up, everybody, inside and outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sent forth his word, and his word healed them and delivered them. The Bible says, believe the Lord, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. As I speak over your life, I want you to believe. Please, please, believe and return with mighty testimonies. We don't have all the time to do the things we want to do. But we want to challenge thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Listen, and the Bible says, and whatsoever Adam called them, that's what they became whatsoever Adam called them. The Bible says he brought the animals to him to see what he will call them. And he told Job, has thou commanded thy morning? We're about to speak. Prophecy is very powerful, brothers and sisters. This is the moment where everyone can participate, including your loved ones who are not here. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease in this place, everything called terminal disease, go for Tabareka. Everything called terminal disease, in the name that is above all names, I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I curse you now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, that sickness leaves your body now. Leaves your body now. Lift your body now. Lift your body now. Lift your body now. Every SS and AS genotype right now. The Lord who has done it uncountable times in this place. My God, let SS and AS change to AA now. Change to AA now. Change to AA now. Change to AA now. With medical proof. Change to AA now. Every HIV in this place. Anyone with any deadly virus. HIV. Cancer. Diabetes. In the name of Jesus. Be healed now. Be healed now. With medical proofs, be healed now. I command your spirit responsible. Go, go in the name of Jesus. Everything that has tied your progress, everything that has tied your progress in the name that is above every other name. I lose you from it now. I lose you from it now. I lose you from those chains now. Now. Anyone here trusting God for a job, both for you and your loved ones, hey, Prateka, ba, 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 ba. we release miracle jobs now. We release miracle jobs now. I speak it into your life. 
I command it into your destiny. I command it into your family. Receive it now. Receive it now. Hallelujah. Every spirit of delay that is working in the life of anyone here things you should have accomplished something has pulled you down there are levels you would have been right now i command right now according to the anointing of the spirit upon my life let there be acceleration now acceleration now acceleration now i challenge the powers that hold you down let them go I challenge the forces. I challenge the altars. I challenge the acts of witchcraft. I release you now. Anyone's marital destiny, hear me, for you and for your loved ones, anyone's marital destiny that has been tied down, whether you are married or not, there are people who are married it's like they are not married there are others that should marry and there are powers that have said you will not get married this night by the fire of the holy ghost i open up marital doors i open up marital doors God protected me. i open up marital doors i open up marital doors I pray everything responsible for inexplainable academic failure. You are doing your best. You write exams. The result comes out and you know it's not your own. I prophesy right now upon your life, whatever is not your own, I take it out of your life. Whatever result that is not your own, I take it out in the name of Jesus. I command corrections. I command adjustments in the name of Jesus. For those who have been victimized by any lecturer, you are supposed to get A. They gave you E. I command, let there be a restoration. That restoration must happen. Hallelujah. Anyone barren here? Low sperm count, fibroid, whatever it is, I don't care what it's called. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children. Every barren womb be open now. Hallelujah. All the ladies here that are going to every devil called painful menstruation or irregular menstruation, I don't want to know what the name is. I don't care how long it has been. From this night, I challenge the altars responsible. Be free. Be free. Be free. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances in the name that is above all names. In 2014, we prophesy, let doors beyond your imagination, we open them now. Now, financial doors, financial opportunities, every yoke, every curse, Every spell that brings poverty, despite your giving, 
I cross it now. Hallelujah. I pray every dead spiritual life in this place. There are some of you, you came here as a matter of life and death. I command every dead spiritual life. Let an unction come upon you. Right now as I speak, I fire it back in the name of Jesus. Prayer life, come alive now. Come alive now. Come alive now. What life, come alive now. Let the spirit of revelation come upon you now. Come upon you now. anointing of favor that can come upon a man's life many of you don't understand i want to activate something in your life i pray that anointing of favor that can separate a man for no reason i pray as surely as the lord god of israel lives, may that man to hit you now may it come upon your life I pray for your family members. Whatever the devil said they will not get this year. Whatever project, building project, house project, whatever has tied your family, I prophesy, Lord God of heaven, let there be a rain of testimony. Rain of testimony. Whatever you have lost, and whatever your family members have lost, some of you have lost relationships, some of you opportunities, let there be a restoration now. A restoration now. Hallelujah. And I pray that that presence of God that goes with a man, I pray for every ministry represented here. Every ministry that is represented here, I command begin to move in strange levels of unction strange levels of wisdom strange levels of revelation I release angelic encounters I release prophetic encounters in the name of Jesus now lift your hands I want to activate the gift of the spirit we have a few minutes very, very few. But lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm just going to prophesy. Many people will receive impartations of different kinds of gifts. There are some of you that need activation. Right now in the name of Jesus. Rakatatata. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it, take it. Take it, take it. Take it, take it. Take it, take it. Take it. Take it, give the prophecy. Take it, give the healing. Take it, inside and outside. Receive it, healing anointing. Miracle working anointing. Prophetic anointing. Apostolic anointing. Entrepreneurial anointing. Take it, take it. Leadership mantle. Take it. Prophetic revelation. Take it. Take it. I command your eyes to be open. May you see what others don't see. Anyone marked for death in this place? Anyone marked? in the spirit realm for death in the name of the lord jesus i cause that spirit now 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 spirit of death go 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 go
next week with dramatic testimonies. Whatever you wrote here as your prayer request, I prophesy according to the anointing in the name of Jesus. May your hand receive it. May you walk in it. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Keep standing. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Inside and outside. There are many people that need the Lord Jesus Christ. You have seen the works of the kingdom. Right now, I want to give you an opportunity. There may be a number of you who have never made a decision for Jesus. Especially many of you outside. Some of you were invited for the first time. There are some of you who have given your heart to the Lord. But for some reason, you found yourself derailing. Now is the time to call you back home. No one condemns you. But we are giving you an opportunity. I'm going to count one to five. No matter how far you are, please don't let anybody stop you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. One, start running now. Please leave your seat and come out. Two, outside. Don't let anybody stop you. Find your way to the front. No matter how far. Quickly, quickly, quickly. God bless you. They are coming. God bless you. They are coming. God bless you. They are coming. I only appreciate them. They are coming. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let your friends stop you. This is the beginning of a great journey. Young and old. Everyone, you are invited. You are most welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Look at me. Thank you very much for this bold decision. God bless you as you come. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Even if you are still outside as God is speaking to you, come. Don't let anybody um, stop you from receiving this great blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an experience that you will never recover from. Hallelujah. The Lord desires to use you. He desires to make a mighty tool out of you and that you spend eternity with him. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is a real experience. You are talking to a real person. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I confess that I cannot help myself. Tonight, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I repent of my sins. I receive remission right now. I invite Jesus to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Save me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Do wonders through my life. From today, I make progress never to return to my past. I'm free of every guilt. I'm free of every condemnation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these ones. Every wicked spirit that keeps them in sin, I curse it now. I declare that this decision they have made will be authentic. Make mighty men and women out of them. I curse every spirit, every foul devil that is responsible for keeping you in any state of life you do not want. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. And I declare that from today, you are making spiritual progress. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Congratulations. Welcome to the biggest family. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers, the gentlemen waving their hands to you. They'll welcome you and they'll give you some instructions. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.